In part one of this Super Dreamcast series, we installed arguably one of the best mods you can do for this console. The DC Digital is an amazing mod that allows you to play your Dreamcast system via HDMI with amazing video quality results. Not only that, we also replaced the original white shell with this beautiful translucent smoked one. Now to finish things off on this Sega Dreamcast build, we're going to be adding a few other necessary mods to really make this an incredible gaming machine. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today we're going to finish this awesome Sega Dreamcast build by installing the last remaining mods that I outlined in part 1 of this series. If you haven't already checked out part 1 where I show you how to install the DC Digital mod as well as this awesome translucent shell, you can watch it by clicking on the card at the top of your screen and I'll leave a link to it down below. Okay, so I originally planned to release this part two video right after part one, but I ran into a couple issues. After installing all the mods I'll be showing you in this video, everything worked perfectly for about 30 minutes, and then I randomly lost video output and the console appeared to not be working. I eventually got everything to work perfectly after some troubleshooting, and at the end of this video, I'll be going over some of the lessons learned, as well as why I think things didn't initially work as they should and hopefully this will help you with any potential issues you may run into if you plan on doing these mods yourself. Okay, so as I mentioned previously, we're gonna be installing a few more upgrades into this Dreamcast. We'll be upgrading the cooling fan with a larger and quieter Noctua fan, adding a GDMU optical drive emulator so we can play games off an SD card, and we'll be swapping out the power supply with the Dream PSU to hopefully keep the internal system temps nice and cool. Great, so I'll start off by briefly going over everything I'll be using to finish this build, then I'll show you how to put it all together, discuss the key features of the mods, go over the pros and cons, review some very important lessons learned, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. So the first thing we'll be installing is the Dream PSU. It comes as a single unit with a 3D printed bracket for the power jack. The primary benefit of this mod is that it essentially moves the PSU or power supply outside of the console resulting in cooler operating temperatures inside the Dreamcast. The next thing we'll be installing is the Noctua fan mod. This actually has two benefits. The first is that it increases airflow which improves cooling performance and secondly, and I would argue more importantly, is that it makes the Dreamcast whisper quiet. The Dreamcast is notorious for having a very noisy fan, and this mod takes care of that. Now I bought this fan kit from Laser Bear Industries, and it came with a custom conversion cable that allows you to plug it in. It's a really great kit, and I highly recommend it. And lastly, you'll need this. This is the GDMU. It's an optical drive emulator that allows you to play games off an SD card. This mod also has the benefit of slightly improving load times, and also making the system overall much more quiet. Again, like the Dreamcast's original fan, the GDMU unit has a reputation for being quite loud. Now, in order to make all this stuff fit inside the console, I had to 3D print quite a few components. For the fan, I printed a new shroud, which doubles as a mounting platform. Now, because the new fan shroud occupies more space, it interferes with the Dreamcast lid release mechanism, so I had to print a new modified one as well. And lastly, to keep the existing airflow and to give the console a more polished look, I printed a bracket that secures the GDMU. Now, this is a custom one that, again, my buddy Kyle made because all the ones that I found online didn't really work, but I'll get into that later in the video. Okay, I think I covered everything. So without any further ado, let's finish this project. Okay, to kick things off, let's open up the Dreamcast. The nice thing about the mods we'll be installing is that we only need to remove the top shell to access everything we'll be replacing. With the upper shell removed, we can get to work. Let's start with the power supply. 
First, unplug the switch cable and then unfasten the two screws. With a little persuasion, the power supply should lift right out. And don't forget this plastic insulator piece. Next, we'll take out the GD-ROM assembly. It's only held in with three screws. Once they're unfastened, just lift the GD-ROM out. And last, let's take out the fan. It's secured by two screws on either side. Be sure to unplug it from the controller PCB. Okay, let's first install the Dream PSU. Simply align the pins with the holes on the Dream PSU PCB and firmly push it down. Once in place, secure it with one of the original power supply screws as shown. Then plug in the switch cable. And be sure to slot in the power port bracket. Next, let's install the Noctua fan. Pay attention to the airflow direction as indicated by the arrows on the fan housing. The arrow should be pointing away from the console, meaning air is flowing out. Next, connect the included adapter cable to the fan cable. This will allow us to plug in the fan into the controller PCB to get power. Position the fan shroud and secure it with the two Phillips screws. Once installed, manage the fan cable so that it doesn't interfere with any other components during reassembly. Once in position, secure the fan to the shroud using the single screw that came with the kit. And this is how I manage the fan cabling. Now we're going to install the GDMU by first positioning the 3D printed mounting bracket. Secure the bracket by reusing one of the GD-ROM screws. Then insert the GD-ROM connector into the port on the motherboard as shown. And then reuse the last two remaining GD-ROM screws to secure the GDMU to the 3D printed bracket. Next, we need to replace the lid release latch because the Noctua fan is much larger and will interfere with its operation. Remove this spring with some tweezers. And then unfasten the two screws. Remove the old latch and replace it with the new 3D printed one. Then fasten it in place with the two screws. And reinstall the spring. Last but not least, install the other part of the GDMU bracket. It's simply pressure fitted. Now go ahead and reinstall the top shell and button up the console. And to finish things off, apply the Dreamcast sticker that came with the shell. Fantastic. If there was a perfect way to play Dreamcast games, this is it. One of the really cool things about this build is that most of the components are aftermarket. The power supply, fan, media drive, and the shell are all aftermarket components. The only original parts left are the controller ports, RF shielding, and the motherboard. What truly makes this console stand out now is not only the great video quality, but also that the console itself is much quieter overall thanks to the upgraded fan and ODE. So let's go over some of the unique features of these mods. Starting with the fan, as I mentioned previously, it increases airflow inside the Dreamcast and operates much more quietly than the original fan. Beyond that, there really isn't anything else to say. The power supply, as you can see, occupies a much smaller footprint than the original OEM unit, and that's in large part due to this. This wall wart is actually the power supply, so you can see that it now resides outside of the console. 
Being outside helps keep the Dreamcast much cooler since this was a large source of heat, so that of course is a welcome change. And lastly, and arguably the most feature-rich mod we did in this video is the GDMU. Now this is a clone unit, but really it's the only option available for the GDMU since an original one is very difficult to source. On the PCB, obviously you can notice the SD reader and the small momentary switch next to it. When you first boot up the console, the GDMU loads the first folder on your SD card, which is the GDMU front end operating system. Here you can select which game you want to load. After loading a game, you can go back to the Dreamcast dashboard by pressing the momentary switch. Once there, you can press the momentary switch again and it will load the next game on your list. However, you'll notice that we don't know what game that is exactly, which brings me to the pros and cons. Starting with the cons this time, I have to say that the GDMU isn't the most intuitive device to set up, nor is it to use. While I won't get into it in this video, the setup process for the GDMU wasn't the easiest. I was able to do it, but it wasn't a matter of just dragging and dropping the disk image files onto the SD card like I wish it was. Another con of the GDMU is that pressing the momentary switch does not bring you to the game selection menu like you think it would. Instead it takes you to the Dreamcast dashboard. From there you can press the switch again and it will cycle down your library of games, but you won't know what game is being loaded unless you have the list memorized. It would have been much better if pressing the switch brought you to the game selection menu of the GDMU. Instead, in order to get back to that screen, you need to shut down the Dreamcast and then turn it back on. Not ideal in my opinion. Now it could be that I set up my SD card incorrectly, so if anyone knows how to fix this issue, please leave me a comment down below. The only other con I have is that the GDMU does not seem to fit well into any of the available 3D printable brackets that I could find online. I printed many different variations of the bracket and all of them caused the GDMU to sit too high, causing connection issues with the Dreamcast motherboard. This here is the portion that is too thick and it needs to be shortened by a couple millimeters. So of course I reached out to my friend Kyle who is a 3D designing wizard and he was able to modify one of these models so that the GDMU sits lower and makes a good solid connection. I'll leave a link to the updated design down below for those of you who may want to use it. So bottom line, I feel that since the GDMU is a heavily cloned device, you may find that there are small variations to its design depending on the vendor you buy it from. Some may use slightly different components that have different tolerances than the original design, thus causing issues such as the one that I had. The last con has to do with the Dream PSU. There is a great article on RetroRGB which goes over why this may not be the best mod for the Dreamcast. The article cites some findings from Voltar which indicate the design is rather boilerplate and not really customized for the Dreamcast console itself. He's not saying it'll damage your console, but rather states that the original PSU is far superior. I'll probably swap in my original PSU at a later date, and also leave this article linked down below. It's a really interesting read. So really, those are the only cons that I've noticed. I've been running this console for hours on end and everything seems to work well and reliably. Which now brings me to the pros. I have to say that by and large, I'm very satisfied with all of these mods. With the exception of the DC Digital, the fan, GDMU, the power supply, and even the shell are all extremely easy to install. Now, while the GDMU is a bit quirky and perhaps not as refined as say the Terra Onion mode, it is also a much cheaper option. The GDMU can be had for around 50 bucks and it does what it's supposed to. It plays games, and so far as I can tell, it plays them reliably. On the other hand, the mode costs over $200. Now for all that extra money, you're getting compatibility with the Saturn and PS1, a much nicer interface, and most likely better customer service and ease of use. So while I may upgrade to the mode at a later date, I feel the GDMU works just fine for now, especially at its price point. Overall, this is an amazing build, and I absolutely love everything about it. The Dreamcast has never been better, and I find myself excited to revisit old titles that I haven't played in recent years to see how they look on a flat panel television. Which now brings me to some lessons learned. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I had intended to make this video much sooner, but I ran into some issues. Soon after installing all of these mods, 
I lost video output. I immediately thought it was a bad solder connection on the DC digital ribbon cable, so I tried to touch up my soldering and I still had no picture. I decided to remove the ribbon cable and install a brand new one. Again, no picture. Upon inspection, I noticed that my R602 to P1 wire had become frayed due to it being too close to a screw post. So one lesson learned here is to always be cognizant of wire management and be sure wires are routed so that they are out of the way of screws. I feared that the frayed wire caused a short and perhaps fried a component on the DC Digital or the Dreamcast motherboard. I went so far as to sending the DC Digital PCB to Dan at Black Dock Technologies and he confirmed that there was nothing wrong with the PCB. So I installed a ribbon cable for the third time and it still didn't work. Except this time, I noticed that the GDMU was not plugged in all the way. The 3D printed bracket was causing it to sit too high and not make a good connection. I removed the bracket and installed the GDMU by itself and lo and behold, it worked perfectly. I now suspect that my DC digital installation never had any issues and that my Dreamcast wasn't working simply due to a poor connection from the GDMU to the motherboard. So the major lesson learned here is when troubleshooting, look for the simplest explanations first and inspect all work and not just the work associated with the issue at hand. Had I not been so focused on the DC digital ribbon cable, I may have seen that the issue could have simply been a poor connection of the GDMU and saved myself a lot of trouble. So there you have it the Dreamcast of my dreams. I hope that the tutorials and lessons learned will help you if you plan on building your own Dreamcast console of your dreams. As always, I'm curious about what you all think of this build, so definitely leave me a comment down below. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, see you next time.